Morning all, and uh, today we're going to talk about Hendrix Lapierre, who is, from what I can tell, no relation to any Lapierres you may know who played in the NHL. So, Hendrix Lapierre, uh, honestly, no idea where this kid's going to go in the draft, and I think a lot of it's going to depend on doctors. So, we talk a lot about players dealing with concussions and long-term injuries and things of that nature. Well, Lapierre, for a young kid, has been dealing with this. So here's to hoping we see him healthy for the draft and for the following season. And, you know, he was supposed to be making a comeback at the time that everything got shut down. So we won't know exactly what we're getting with him. Now, I'm wearing Anaheim because Anaheim has Boston's uh, first round draft pick. You've got to think that's going to be late in the first round. And he may very well be a guy that a team takes a flyer on late in the first round, right? So he's six foot tall, 181 pounds. He does play center. His strengths passing. Great elite level passer. Absolutely fantastic passer. Teamwork, puck handling, agility, acceleration, all this to his strengths. He honestly is a very gifted player, but neck injury shorted, shortened a season. Now, initially, that was seen as a concussion, but upon re examination, they realized it was a, a neck injury that was causing his symptoms. He did, though, have a concussion in his first year in the QMJHL. So between the concussion in year one and the massive neck injury in year two that kept him out for months, these are reasons why he has a lot of strengths, but he is not higher up in the draft rankings. Uh, and, and it was said, too, he had a disastrous year after a great Holenka tournament in August. Uh, he was second behind only Cole Perfetti uh, among his teammates in points in the Holenka tournament. So very, very talented player, uh, plays well with very talented squads, but... Again, just a disastrous year. Uh, team doctors, I think, are going to decide where this guy gets drafted. So there's going to be a, a massive file basically available to teams that scouts don't have. And at the time of hockey prospect putting out their black book, they don't have that either. They will tell them, okay, what well, condition is he in? Is he 100%? Uh, how likely is he to, to, to yeah, aggravate this injury at the NHL level if he should get there? There are a lot of considerations that are going to go into whether or not he is drafted in the first round. If it's a nasty report, if the report is basically, no, his his health is, is always going to be a concern, he likely slides into the second round. So we'll see where Hendricks goes. Here's to hoping for uh, a clean bill of health from doctors. He's number 27 on hockey prospects list, number 17 on the ISS list. Central scouting has him at 13th among North American skaters. Elite Prospects agrees with Hockey Prospect. They have him at seven or 27th as well. Bob McKenzie has him at 15th. So Bob McKenzie thinks this kid can go in the middle of the first round. And other reports have him late in the first round. And a lot of it's going to be because of injury. So last year in Shakutami, 48 games, 13 goals, 32 assists, 45 points. This year, again, Shakutami, 19 games, only two goals. He is a pass-first guy. And frustratingly so, I would think. 15 assists, those 17 points. So 15 assists in 19 games. That's a really, really solid number. But even he would likely want to see more than just two goals in 19 games. And again, he was ready to come back and then everything got shut down. So we won't know exactly how things would have gone had he come back. Had he come back and had a really strong finish. For all we know, a lot of these concerns could kind of be not necessarily put aside... But at least you go, well, he's come back from that neck injury and look how well he played. So we're really f flying in the dark with this one, even more than on a lot of the other prospects, because there aren't even the amount of games that you would necessarily want to see if you're a scout to make up your mind. And I, I didn't see a whole lot other than basically, well, I'm glad I saw him before he got hurt. Good player. Um, great passer. And, you know, it's a shame he got hurt, so we didn't see him more. And that's, that's the key thing. You're going to see a team likely have to see that doctor's report and rely on some, some reports that may be very speculative. So, again, this is one of those guys who you could see taken in the first round that may never end up playing in the NHL, and people will look back and go, well, why was he in the first round? And the reason will be because he has those, those abilities. He could also be one of those guys who comes to the NHL and maybe he's completely healthy. And we look back on these reports and say, well, he had a very good career. Those those injuries in junior didn't really end up being a problem. But sometimes those guys who get hurt in juniors 
uh, will then be guys who get hurt in the NHL as well, or those injuries can kind of be nagging. So hopefully he's 100% now and stays 100% uh, going forward. And again, it just it feels like the kind of guy maybe the Ducks with a late first round pick would say, you know what, we'll take a shot. If this kid drops to that, that level, maybe his passing and his overall offensive game are strong enough that the Ducks say, you know what, we, we should take a shot at this kid because we do have trouble scoring goals. And at the very least, he's an excellent passer. So that helps. And uh, yeah, it sounds like he does very well to generate opportunities. It's just a matter of getting healthy. So here's to, here's to rooting for the kid to get healthy. And we'll see what happens in the draft in October and where he goes. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.